The people in East Palestine, Ohio, are infuriated with the government's response to the train derailment. But how's the rest of the country feeling about the federal government's response? Well, Rasmussen reports asked, of course. They asked, how would you rate the federal government's response to the Ohio train derailment? 10% said excellent. 20% said good. 16% said fair. 46% said poor. And 9% said they weren't sure. Rasmussen reports also asked about the water in East Palestine, which the EPA says is safe to drink. It asked, quote, if you live near the site where the train derailed, how safe would you feel drinking the water? 9% said very safe. 14% said somewhat safe, 24% said not very safe, and 47% said not safe at all, and 6% said they weren't sure. Let's bring in Rasmussen Reports head pollster Mark Mitchell to discuss these new polls. Mark, 46% of adult Americans say the federal government is handling this situation in Ohio poorly. We just heard from a couple of ladies who were on the ground there yesterday, and clearly the people of East Palestine, the residents, if you put, pulled just them, that number would probably be close to 100%. So tell us, what are the standouts about this poll with the average American person? Americans don't trust their government. And these numbers are high, and you're never going to get to 100% with the American population. But they agree with the residents in Ohio, absolutely. Before I get into the numbers, though, I want to rant about the polling industry. So this is an industry that would throw tens of millions of dollars into breathlessly reporting the COVID vaccination rate. And yet we're the first people and probably the only people that are going to ask questions about this, to be honest. It's great that journalists rush to Ohio, but the big story is the federal government was basically ignoring these people or trying to pretend the problem didn't exist. And pollsters can ask questions and shine a light on the fact that there are concerns about how this is being handled. And this should go on a big, long list of things that we'll ask that other people won't. The vaccine safety stuff, the Hunter Biden stuff, uh, you know, election fraud. And I think the problem is, is that many of these polling organizations are being captured by, you know, media, big corporate media or political organizations. We get our money mostly from subscribers. So uh, I, I think people should look around when they read a poll and try and figure out what that pollster's business model is because nobody's asking these questions at all. It's crazy. So getting into the numbers, uh, we asked, uh, how would you rate the federal government's response to the Ohio train derailment? The 10% excellent, 30% combined excellent and good, 46% poor. So now we're talking about the faceless federal government that does so much in everybody's daily lives. And these are Joe Biden's numbers for his absolute worst issue, immigration, very similar. I would say the poor is slightly lower because people have a little bit higher, not sure. But his worst issue is immigration, and, and he polls only slightly worse than this on that. So they're not getting, the government is not getting good marks. 10% rate their federal government excellent on how they're dealing with a, a very visible crisis. Now, I think the Republicans and independents on all these questions poll pretty close. So I think one of the themes that we're going to look at here is what I've noticed is an increasing difference between Democrats and Biden's strong supporters, because they are not the same thing. Biden has a 75% approval rating today among Democrats, but he only has a 47% strong approval. So Republicans rate the federal government 15% combined excellent or good, independents 28%, but they rate the federal government 48% poor, really bad marks among independents. Democrats, though, they only rate 18% excellent but it's a 44% combined excellent and good. So they're not saying the federal government's doing an excellent job here, but they're not very likely to say the government's doing poor either, 27%. So it's really kind of spread out. But if you go to those Biden strong approvers, 76% combined excellent or good, 32% of people that strongly approve of Biden rate the federal government excellent here. So looking at that line, excellent, Biden strong approvers, 32%. Somewhat approve, 2%. Somewhat disapprove, 1%. Strongly disapprove, 1%. So they are the only people rating the federal government excellent here. Now, as for the water safety issue, so the EPA is coming out and saying, go ahead, guys, it's safe to drink, chug away. <laughs> Americans aren't, aren't buying it. Three to one margin, they say <laughs> the water is not safe. Now, I could get into all the demographics, but what I thought was most interesting is to go plur plurality hunting in the crosstabs. 
So there's only two demographics in the crosstabs where a plurality say that they would feel safe drinking the water down there because the EPA said so. <laughs> and it's not going to be hard. Well, one of them might be hard to guess, but it's Biden's strong approvers. 50 percent, a majority say, yep, I believe the EPA. Let's let's go. And, and 45 percent say it's not safe. But the other one I, I thought was really interesting. It's uh, incomes over 200K. And I think the Venn diagram of Biden strong supporters and high incomes uh, is pretty good overlap there. So really nobody else, I mean, Democrats, only 33% of Democrats say they'd feel safe drinking the water. 62% say they wouldn't. So there's a very big difference between, again, the Biden strong supporters and the Democrats. And of course, Republicans and independents are, are almost identical here. They don't want to touch this stuff. It's like 17% to 79% for Republicans, 18% to 72% for independents. Well, I think it would be pretty much a given for anybody. You have a, a spill, you know, a, a chemical release and an accident, and they t ask you if you feel safe drinking the water. I, I, most people on their surface would say no, but it doesn't really surprise me considering they voted for Biden and the fallout since. The people who still strongly support Biden would drink the water because they've certainly been drinking the Kool-Aid, haven't they, <laughs> right. Mark Mitchell? Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.